everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest chef all the way from Belize, I just want to mention that if you buy my new book, which came out a few days ago on Amazon, email us your receipt by midnight on Sunday, October 18th, a week from today, to chefajbonus at yahoo.com. We will send you many wonderful bonuses, including recipes that didn't make it in the book, a video to my double layer frosted vanilla carrot cake, and the audio copy of the book, so you don't have to buy it on Audible. So thank you so much for your support. Today's chef, as, as with many of the guests on Chef AJ Live, was a recommendation from a previous guest, Chef Babette, and her name is Chef India Camille, and she is going to be making some amazing recipes. Please welcome her to the show. It's so nice to meet you. Greetings, Chef AJ. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm so excited to be here. You know, um, yeah, I have so much to share. You know, Belize is so great. So I really, really appreciate you taking the time to interview me and even thinking about me. I feel honored. Well, I'm so happy to, to see you do this. You look beautiful. Your set looks beautiful. And I can't wait to hear your story and see your recipes. Yeah, yeah. So do I just talk and say, like, do I just talk and say? And move How, however you normally do. Just you pretend, have- you're te- pretend you're teaching a cooking class and all these people are watching. Okay. Well, greeting, greetings everyone out there. Greeting everyone who watches Chef AJ and follow Chef AJ and who are tuning in to this show and this episode, um, much gratitude. So we're gonna jump right into it. Um, but first I just give a little explanation of myself or I'm Chef India Camille. Uh, I live in Belize. Uh, I've been here for 10 years. We, me and my husband, we moved from California. So originally I'm from California originally. And I have been a living foodist for about 12 years now. Uh, so I have only eaten 90 to 100 percent all live for 10 to about 12 years now. So so, yeah, I mean, I'm a chef. I'm a special nutritionist. I'm a detox specialist as well, because you really can't maintain a living food lifestyle without detoxing yourself. <laughs> you know, um, it, be, it gets really hard and you want to return back to eating certain foods. And I watch I have followed you, Chef AJ. I looked at some of your videos and I see that. You gave up eating all that processed foods to, you know, eating completely unprocessed, healthy, real healthy. And I think I take the same approach when it comes to living foods, because, you know, you can be a living foodist and be a junk foodist, too. (laughs) Absolutely. You know, it's, it's interesting. I noticed you're saying living foods rather than raw food. Yeah, because who wants to eat raw foods? Like, you know, I always say living foods for living bodies, you know, living goodies. I don't even like to say bodies because it's not a bad thing. You know, it's a goodie. But um, most people wouldn't know what I was saying if I said that. So I just say, <laughs> I just say bodies. But yeah, living foods for living bodies. And, you know, because really a lot of people are, the raw food thing is catching on, but a lot of raw food movement is catching on and it's it's showing its benefits for a lot of people it's becoming beneficial but when you tell somebody yeah you know have a a raw burger patty you know they're like "Mm, I don't know about that like the first thing that they think about now I have to give a disclaimer if you hear chickens in the background or you hear the tortilla man coming around just know we're living real life so we got we got neighbors that have a lot of chickens, but yeah. So most people are turned off by the ideal of raw, but then when you tell them what living foods and they go, Oh, well, what is that? (laughs) So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, so I'm going to get right into it. Um, I think that where, where I specialize in, like I was sharing with you is really showing folks how to make living foods, you hear it? Showing folks, showing folks how to make living foods affordable and sustainable. Um, because I think that those are the primary reasons why people, and, and make it delicious, where people can really see themselves always eating that way instead of doing a cleanse or it being a temperamental thing. So um, one of the biggest tenets that I stand by and stand on is to create everything yourself, like 
really, I am in a hundred percent alignment with you, Chef AJ, no packaged foods. <laughs> you know, the, the realness is, is you don't know what goes into that. Even if it's raw vegan, it says it's raw vegan. Like who really knows? Who really knows? Especially when you look at a lot of the packaged foods, you know, they are, they're designed to make a profit. So then we have to question, you know, everything that goes into it, including raw snacks, our living food snacks. So today we're gonna, you know, we make everything. We're gonna make our own milks. Um, we're gonna make our own nut patties. We're gonna make our own juice. Obviously most people are used to making juice. So that's not a big deal, but we're gonna make um, a, a sesame seed, a black sesame seed, triple X smooth, uh, uh, milk, right? And the reason why we're gonna use sesame seeds is because sesame seeds are actually really high in calcium. So for people out there who have growing children and they're wondering, well, how can I get, you know, the proper calcium? And I would say, you know, sesame seeds has three times more calcium than cow's milk. Obviously we're vegan. So, you know, but still yet some of the alternative milks that we're buying on the shelves, they don't necessarily have the level of nutrition in it that you would get if you made it yourselves. And I think that some people are like, they, they, they become very, you know, boxed in when it comes to making milks. They're like, I'm gonna make almond milk, I'm gonna make coconut milk, done, you know? But who has ever heard of black sesame seed milk, right? So we're gonna start with our black sesame seeds. Now, sesame seeds, they, they come whole or unholed. And that's, that's the difference between the black ones and the white ones, right? So we have them unholed here, and we're gonna add them to the blender. Now, there may be, we're gonna add one cup. And how I usually do my milk is I do three to one servings. So we'll do three cups of water to one serving, to one cup of sesame, um, sesame seeds here. And I have my water here, pour it right into the blender. I like my milks to be more loose. Now, if you like your milks more rich, then you would wanna go ahead and, you know, do less. <clears throat> now, sesame seeds, sesame seeds tend to be a little bitter, which is the reason why I think a lot of people do not deal with the milk situation with the sesame seeds because your milk could come out bitter, but it's a good bitter. It's almost like a metallic taste that's necessary. And I find that a lot of women really when they have this this shake or this milk they feel like they're on top of the world they actually this is my happy happy milk i would call it um so we're gonna just turn on the blender that I love about this milk is the color. <laughs> it's just such a cool color, you know, like you have the charcoal drinks and stuff that people that people are uh, making now, but you know, most people haven't heard of sesame seed milk. Have you, Chef AJ, have you tried sesame seed milk? You know, believe it or not, I have, and it was black sesame seed milk. It was from one of the companies that makes pretty clean milks, but I'm with you, Chef India. I, own, I make my own now. I just don't buy the boxes anymore since learning from a lot of the GI doctors in the GI Health Summit that some of those ingredients, like the stabilizers, are just not good for our gut. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure, for sure. And then they add, add added sugar, and of course, they're going to add water, so it's like, the taste is not even that great, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so we're gonna strain this and I am using, it's pretty beat up, but I'm using a nut milk bag that I create. And you know, this bag that I create is more sturdy than all of the other ones that I have found out there on the market, which is the reason why I created it. It's washable and it's extremely durable you know, and it's um, the bag itself, when you get the bag, it actually comes as adjustable. So if people are struggling out there with their cheesecloth, because <laughs> I remember the cheesecloth days, I'm sure you can attest to it, falling on the side, falling in the mixture, you know, you're having to scoop it all up. 
So I'm glad I don't have to deal with that anymore. We're going to, can you pass me the other blender? Um, Chef India, Dina wants to know what you do with the pulp. Well, with the sesame seeds, I don't really do much with it, but you can make a pate with it. I don't care for the flavor personally. And then once you make a milk, you really have extracted the essence of it. So it's pretty empty. You can use it for filler if you really wanted to, you know, because right now we're in COVID-19 and people's pockets are strained right now. So, you know, if you really wanted to, you could stretch that and you could make a nut meat or a pate out of it. Um, but you have to be, you have to be very creative with the sesame seeds because they have a particular flavor, right? Um, all right, so we're going to add our milk back to the blender. Look at that color. I don't know if you all can see that color. It is so, look at that. Oh, I just love it. Um, it does something to me. I don't know what, it does something to me. And then I actually have some bananas here. Now for smoothies, I tend to use frozen bananas, but we're gonna use some fresh bananas for the milk because I like the consistency better and we're gonna use fingerling bananas. Are you familiar with Dr. Sebi, uh, Chef AJ? I, I'm not, so tell us who he is. Okay, so Dr. Sebi, he was, he did transition already, but he was a, a master herbalist and he is the one that really started the alkaline versus acid foods and non-hybrid foods. Um, non-hybrid foods. Well, he maybe didn't start it because you can't start information that's been out there for eons, but he definitely brought forward the notion of not eating hybrid foods. So he has a whole list. He did transition, like I said, a few years ago, but he has a list of, um, of foods that we should or should not be eating. And he always says that the only bananas that we really should be eating are the fingerling bananas. Because one, for people who don't know out there, they gas up those bananas that, especially if they're not organic. Now you're in the States, so it's a little difficult because bananas only grow in tropical environments. So unless you're in Florida or in one of those states like that, that you have the ability to grow bananas, they don't grow naturally where you're at. So, you know, some of the bananas, most of the time, they're probably going to have some level of chemicals and gas on them. But the fingerling ones tend to be a little different. And you could go to your ethnic store in your, in your, in your neighborhood or outside of your neighborhood, wherever the ethnic store is, and you can find these. Because usually you're, you know, you can find them at Whole Foods too, but, you know, they're the same ones. So you might as well pay less and go to the ethnic store and get, get but he says that these have seeds. I can't show you the seeds from there, but there are visible seeds inside of the bananas, right? So in Belize, we have like maybe five or six different kinds of bananas. We have the bananas that are for export that you all receive. And then we have like four or five different bananas other than that. So there are these, then there's another small one. Then there's the, the, um, there's the red bananas, right? So there's a lot of bananas. So we have two cups of bananas that we're gonna add straight to the blender. And I like them better. Personally, when I buy the regular bananas that are really designed for export, uh, they have a little taste to them. They have a little smell to them. And it is because they gas them to the, to the heat, to the, to the tilt. So we have the bananas in there. We're gonna use some dates here. Yeah, Chef AJ, when you said no sugar, no salt, no oil, I was like, this is right in my, this is right up my zone right here. You know, <laughs> right. this is right up my zone. I actually, the oil thing, it used to be a challenge for me, um, but I took some time and I, I worked with Dr. Baxter Montgomery. Are you familiar with him? I love him. I just spoke to him on the phone yesterday because he's going to be doing a cooking demo for the upcoming Truth About Weight Loss Summit because he's not just a cardiologist, he's also a chef. Yes, well, yes, he's a chef. So the thing, I didn't know he was a chef, but I did do some work with him and with um, the Montgomery Cardio, um, Cardio, his place, I forget the exact name of it, but uh, at his place in, in Houston, and he was like, no oil. I was like, what? Oh, how do I make the nut meat have this texture of meat, you know, without oil? So for about eight months, I was creating recipes without oil. And I was surprised 
that I didn't need to use it. So I was like, I was, I was right in alignment with that when you said that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dates. Now, again, the sesame seed milk is a little bitter, but the bananas are naturally sweet. So, you know, you don't have to use as many dates if you don't want to, if you're suffering from diabetes, that, um, um, you know, uh, dates are, are higher on the glycemic index. So it's probably best that you use a little less. Uh, we're also gonna use some superfoods here. We have some mesquite powder. And mesquite powder, we're gonna use one tablespoon. Mesquite powder has a little sweetness. It's a superfoods from Peru, and it has, it has it, it's high in different minerals and trace minerals. It gives you energy. We're also gonna use, you know, cause we want some, we want some mad energy. We're gonna use half a teaspoon of ginseng. We're gonna add that directly to the, to the blender. And then we have some maca powder. I'm sure most people are, are familiar with maca. Now, when you're dealing with maca, you want to be mindful not to use too much else your thing could turn out like throw up. <laughs> All right, so that's it. We're going to give this a spin. And that's it. When you're using the Vitamix and you're making this milk, you really don't want to over blend it because it will, it will make the banana taste a little strange right so um yeah okay i am fasting right now so i am gonna let my husband taste this judah um and he could taste how the, I'll, I'll have a just to like just to, you want to taste sure mm, chef aj so i'm gonna repeat the rep the recipe we have four cups of black sesame seed milk. We have seven dates. We have one tablespoon of mesquite superfood powder. We have uh, two cups of fingerling bananas or regular bananas if you choose to. We have one uh, half a teaspoon of maca powder and one teaspoon of ground ginseng. How is it? Is it good? Come and let come and show because I'm talking and I'm over here. You gotta show show them that it's good. He's a taster. Oh my god! Excellent. <laughs> nice to meet. All right. You. How did you so, end up in Belize? Oh wow. Okay, so I'm my family. My mother, my family is from Belize originally, and I knew from a young younger age. And it's not to I don't I'm not dumping on the United States, but I knew that I wanted to live in more natural environments because I was from LA. So uh, there are places in the state in the U.S. that have more natural environments. Just in comparison, I don't want it to be in a tropical environment, you know. And so we just decided to come down and, and Belize needed our help. Our first client was the prime minister's wife in Belize, right? And she's a recovering. She's recovering. She is um, in remission for cancer. So she reached out to me to create a meal plan and detox her from all of the different chemicals that she was, you know, taking in during her treatments. So yeah, so that's how we just drove down from California. We decided we wanted to be in Belize. My husband is from Belize. So it's, we're not strangers really, but it is a new world. <laughs> and sometimes I do miss the state. Sometimes I go back, I go back sometimes. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. I love, by the way, I love your backsplash. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the, the shake is really good, y'all. Y'all are really going to enjoy that, and it's going to make you feel really amazing. So we're going to move on to our next recipe, and we're going to make a... Yeah, India, excuse me, I don't want to lose these questions. People are asking if you could be a little bit more specific. What is maca powder? What is mesquite powder, and where can you get it? Okay, so maca powder and mesquite powder are superfoods that originate from Peru. They're fruits, really, and they're also pods. So mesquite is an actual pod, and the, the people of Peru have used it for energy and also like a meal replacement because we know that Peru is, we know that, uh, that Peru is, is high in altitude. So there, and it's not a tropical environment, so there aren't, you know, there are things that grow, but 
they also have foods that they can use to take them on long journeys. So mesquite is known as one of them. They also use it for sweetener or even for flour, <laughs> right? Um, and then maca, maca fits in the same category of superfoods. And maca is really good for hormone balancing. A lot of people don't know that there are many different kinds of macas. There's actually a maca for the female and there's a maca for the male. So even though online, if you go online and you look up maca, it will say it helps to balance hormones. You wanna make sure that you find the one that's, if you're a female, you find the one that's for females, which I believe is the red maca, or, you know, or if you're a male, you find that that's the one that's really more available is the one that, it, it, that really kind of balances the testosterone in the system, in the progesterone, right? Uh, which is a balance, but still yet. Does that answer your question? Thank you. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. You have another question or you want me to go on? No, keep going. Okay, if I'm talking too fast, just make me know, you know, maybe raise your hand or something. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna move on to the next item and we're gonna make the Brazil what is it? Sea croquettes, Brazil sea croquettes. And, um, you know, this is a great recipe to not use any salt because we're using sea vegetables and they have their own selenium. I, everything has its own selenium, but it's a great replacement for those who are transitioning out of eating any salt and they still want to have some kind, you know, they're still addicted because salt is an addiction. I would say, you know, it's a, and it's a crystal. Like a lot of what a lot of people don't understand is that salt is a rock crystal. So even if you put it in things and it grinds down, it's still going to require what to be removed from the body, which is part of the topic of what we're speaking about today, which is living your best lifestyle, living your best hydrated lifestyle. So it's going to require water to be removed from the system to process that. And a lot of times I find that most people are not even efficiently hydrated in the first place. So when they go and they eat them, that salt and the foods and everything like that, they tend to feel very tired and lethargic and they're not, they don't really even understand why, but that salt will make you tired because the body is now removing water from the organs and from the tissues because most people are not super hydrated. You have to excuse all of the noise if you hear noise back there. We are in Belize. We got the chickens, we got the tortilla people coming by, we got the tamale people honking their horn. So yeah, so yeah, so this is a great recipe for ones and ones who want to replace their salt. I would say even try to replace your salt intake with sea vegetables, but make sure you rinse your sea vegetables, you soak them properly so you could take off any excess salt as well. Um, yeah, so we're gonna start with one cup of our soaked Brazil nuts. Now, another thing I wanna let people know is that Brazil, you don't need a lot of Brazil nuts, you know. You really should not consume too many Brazil nuts. So even if you wanna start off with half a cup instead of one whole cup, you can do that, right? Um, and it will be fine. You just add more vegetables to this recipe and then, you know, it will be a balance. But, um, yeah, so we have, so far we have one cup and then I have this Kalaloo. Are you familiar with Kalaloo, Chef AJ? I haven't, it's beautiful though. What does it taste like? Ah, it is a, it is, it's, it's kind of bitter. It's kind of like, if I can explain it, it's a cross between maybe kale and spinach. Uh, it's actually amaranth, right? So if you're familiar with amaranth, this is the greens that, amaranth comes from. So these are the leaves of the amaranth plant, right? And believe it or not, it is extremely high. It's higher in iron than kale. However, if you're going to be able to find it in the States, it's going to be a question. Now, I know for a fact, if you live in Atlanta, Georgia, you could go to the to the Decatur market and you could find it there, but I've never found it in Los Angeles but you never could tell, right? So you can use any green of your choice. Mustard greens would be another favorite of mine. I would probably su supplement this with mustard greens. LA has the best mustard greens and it will provide a balance with the sea vegetables as well, right? So we have two cups 
of our Kalalu here. And another way that people can, you know, replace the salt is by making sure you use a, an array of spices. You know, um, personally, I'm a fan of fresh herbs. Fresh herbs add a lot of flavor to what you're doing. So cilantro, rosemary, thyme, and hot pepper. You know, you will find that you won't even need the salt because the flavor, you, you, you're better able to taste all of the flavor, all of the flavors of the ingredients. So I'm gonna let them pass. Okay, so now, now we have a, a serrano chili that we got from our yard. Right? The kalalu came from my yard as well. So I like to, you know, plant plant things and use it instead of actually going to the to the grocery store to go get it. Because you know, just like we make our own foods, you want to grow our own foods too. So we're gonna add one. This is up to you how spicy you want it. You know, um, these can be these can be spicy, it's a little spicy. Um, so we're just going to add one fourth of a cup of the chili, or you can use just a pepper for your own taste. And we have half a cup of onion and uh, a half a cup of fresh cilantro here. So we're going to add this right to the food processor. And then I have here as well, I have some garlic powder. Now there are some people who don't deal with garlic. Um, I find that because some people will say it's agitating to the system. Uh, personally, as a living foodist that's been on this journey for, for some time, my system doesn't require garlic and onion as much as it did before when it was higher in, you know, over abundance of mucus and also uh, it, it, different fungus, right? So like people who are dealing with candida, they may find it beneficial, beneficial to eat garlic because the garlic helps to kill off any excess of that candida, even though it's still going to be there because it's part of the fluoride, it's, it will better come into balance, right? Or even, I know this sounds kind of gross, but <laughs> for women who have yeast infections, they can wrap a piece of garlic in cheesecloth and then they can deposit it, even though we're talking about food. So I don't want to get too much into that, but it will take away and alleviate all of the symptoms immediately. So you don't even need to use the monostat. It will, it will just alleviate that immediately. And then we have, we also have one cup of celery, which is another way that we are adding our sodium content because you know, people make celery salt. So celery is actually higher in sodium than a lot of other is it a vegetable? I don't know. It's a stock. It's a, it's a vegetable. Okay. Maybe it's a bulb like fennel. Maybe they call it, but it is a vet. It's definitely a non-starchy vegetable. You know, maybe now that I think about it, the Kalalu, I think I've seen it at, at some of the uh, Latino markets. Really? I mean, oh, I, man. Because it you, looks familiar. Uh, do, you, do you have something there called a purslane or vertilagos? No, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds like the proper name, Chef AJ. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's actually you don't a weed. Deal with the proper names, huh? It's a, it's actually a weed that sometimes grows in sidewalk cracks, but it's very popular in Mexican cuisine when I teach in Mexico, and it's a very high source of the omega three fatty acids, and it's actually really delicious. Wow, it's it's not dandelion though. No, it's it's in English. It's called purslane, p u r s l a n e, huh. and in Spanish they call it vertilagos. Huh, I've never heard of that, but I'm sure it's here in Belize. If it's in Mexico, if it's in Mexico, it's right here in Belize, you know? But you know, that's the other great thing about greens is really, if people studied their natural environments, they probably could find a lot of edible greens around, you know, especially if you're living in tropical environments. But even so, California has edible greens. Dandelion grows in people's backyards all day and people just use the weed whacker and cut it down, you know? Um, so we have one teaspoon of garlic powder and we have one teaspoon of fennel seed, whole fennel seed. And then we also are gonna do two teaspoons of dulse powder. 
So I'm gonna repeat, I'm gonna repeat back the recipe. So I got it. I got one cup of so far, I got one cup of Brazil nuts. Remember to soak all your seeds, nuts, and grains to remove those enzyme inhibitors, or else you're you will have a, a, a hard time digesting it. And this too brings me into living your most hydrated lifestyle, your best life hydrated, because a lot of people try the raw food lifestyle or the living foods lifestyle. And they say, oh, I have gas, I'm bloated all the time, the food doesn't really agree with me. But they're not necessarily consuming uh, soaked seeds, soaked nuts, soaked grain that have been soaked. And if you can, sprout them so that you can really activate all of the nutritional value that they carry and they're easier to digest. And I will say, you see we added one cup of Brazil nuts. Do you know we have about three about three cups of fresh vegetables to that one cup of Brazil nuts. So something that I do is I make sure that I balance that nut and seed intake. Because remember, we don't need all of those nuts and seeds. You know, people, people be replacing, they, they be going from like, they be like trying to get that fat in, Chef AJ. They like, I gotta get that fat. So give me all the nuts. And then they end up with stomach problems or gut problems. And they say, well, I can't live that way because of that. So, you know, we want to balance it with always something fresh and full of water because the seeds don't have any water. The nuts don't have any water. It did help that we soak them, you know, so that they retain some level, they, they, they absorb levels of water. All right. So what was I saying? One cup of Brazil nuts, two cups of fresh kalaloo, or any green of your choice, recommendation, mustard greens, uh, one cup of celery, half a cup of onion, half a cup, I believe it was half a cup of fresh cilantro, one teaspoon of whole fennel seed, one teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of dulse powder. That's it, right, Chef A? Oh, oh, the pepper, the hot pepper. One, it's up to you, it's your taste, but I have one fourth cup of serrano chili in here without the seeds. The last thing that we're gonna add is we're gonna use wakame seaweed. Now I know you are familiar with this one, Chef AJ. <laughs> so we're gonna soak our wakame here for a quick moment. Yeah. Okay, we're moving right through it. We're moving through it. Yeah, so, you know, the great thing about like taking the approach while this soaks, I'll just talk a little bit more about nut meats and seed meats and um, making sure that we are in balance. When you're making your nut meat and your seed meat, just think about what you used to eat and how you used to season it. We like, we like seasonings. So you don't want to make a, a nut meat that's so heavy on the nut side that it tastes like walnuts. Like you want your, your, better than Jimmy Dean sausage to taste like a better than Jimmy Dean sausage <laughs> just sands all of the rest of that stuff, right? So there's always a balance. And so it's, it's usually, my formula is usually three or four to, to one. So I'll do three cups of whatever. Let's say if we have 12 cups, then I'll be using three cups of nuts or two cups. Usually it's two cups. Standard recipe is two cups, right? And then the rest of it is fresh ingredients. So uh, Chef India, Karen wants to know what part of Belize are you located in? We're located in San Ignacio. We're in the mountains. Diane hey. says she has so many fascinating foods there and she's so informative. And of course she's beautiful too. It's from me, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Gratitude, gratitude. Yes, man. Yeah, Belize is beautiful. That was another reason is because of my lifestyle, Chef AJ, I decided to move to a tropical environment where coconuts are not, you know, so super expensive and hard to get <laughs> because I live off of pineapples and coconuts and papayas. You know, that's my main staple. Fruits are really my main staple, right? Okay, so we have our wakame here. We're just gonna remove it and squeeze it out a little bit. Squeeze the water out. And this is, we're gonna do half a cup. We don't want too much. All right. And that's it. We're gonna give this a spin now in the food processor. 
So how come you're fasting? Oh, wow. So, you know, 2020 has been, I think has been a spiritual year for all of us. You know, there are many dynamics. It's not a negative year. It is a year and uh, that has prompted many of us to make different changes in our lives to like do our purpose, right? To, to exercise our purpose. There are a lot of people who are working jobs that they don't wanna work. There are a lot of people who have lost jobs and they don't know what to do now. So now they're going back in within and finding their creative force and um, you know reawakening that voice within to really fulfill their purpose. And I'm no different. So usually I fast for spiritual reasons. I'm on a 77 day fast. Today is day seven. Seven, um, seven days? 77. That, I've never heard of that. I mean, I, I interviewed Dr. Goldhammer. He says you're not supposed to go over 40 days. Is it just water? No, I'm not doing just water. Um, but I, I tend to be mostly water right now. Usually when I do longer fast, it's a juice fast. Um, usually if they're longer, the last fast that I did that was extensive was 44 days and it was juice. But now I'm finding that, um, with the level of sensitivity and that I, that I am, that I am like, I'm seeking a certain level of awareness, right? So I don't know, I can't say I'm going to fast for 77 days on water. I don't think so <laughs> because even now I probably have one juice per day. Um, you know, because that helps stabilize. Um, but yeah, 77 days is my goal. After the winter, is it solstice or equinox in the winter? Oh boy. Summer solstice, <laughs> vernal equinox. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm going to fast until then because it's going to be, it's going to be a very high spiritual time astrologically different alignments are happening with the planets. And so I just want to be fully aware and in tune and connected to the divine, right? So that's part of the reason why I'm doing this fast. And, you know, everyone can actually join me on the fast. Uh, it's free. They could go to my website and click on, you know, join Chef India for the 77 day fast. And I do a vlog every single day to let you know how it's going. And I also feature some of the recipes that I make for juices. And it's a, it's a community online. So anyone who joins the community, we just have open conversation. And it's not connected to Facebook or Instagram, even though those serve their purpose. It's a very intimate setting. Right now, we have about 55 members. And um, I'm really looking forward to sharing it more and more and more with everyone so that they can be on their journey of fasting as well if they choose to, <laughs> if they choose to. But we'll see. I'm going to give this a spin. We'll see. 77 days is my goal, right? But we'll see what happens because every day, I'm sure you've done some fasting, Chef AJ, and every day is a new day when it comes to fasting. <laughs> so I'm going to give this a spin. Okay. <laughs> Wow, it smells so fragrant, delicious. And you know, it is the Brazil nuts make it a little dry. So I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna add one tomato in there because we don't want it to be too dry or else it won't stick together as a patty, like as a patty. So one tomato is going in. You can also add bell pepper if you so choose to. It's about half a cup of tomato. Man, Chef AJ, I wish everyone there watching and you could smell this. Woo! All right. Do you, do you teach any online classes or have you written any books? I do. I actually do. We have a, um, I actually have some online classes that people can join and it's right there online. It's, it's instant access. So I have a, 
for everyone who's looking to go raw vegan right now and they just don't know where to start or they need some good recipes and they need an equipment guide and they need a, 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 a some slamming recipes and they need some slamming information about how to do it, what things to do, what things not to do, you can sign up for the raw, it's raw, um, 101 with Chef India. And right now it's still on sale for $22. Usually it's 44, but it also comes with the lesson plans. It comes with a video recipe session that has like six recipes. And then it also comes with the, the downloadable recipe cards as well. So it's very informative and it's um, easy to access and you can, you can utilize it on your own time. So we have, I have that class online. We have a smoothies and super milks and shakes class. And trust me, it's not like any other class, Chef AJ, because you see me just make the sesame seed milk. We have a veggie milk for everyone that wants to kind of stay away from the, the even the fruit sugar. We have a veggie milk and it's slamming. So, okay. I don't know if you all can see that. Can you see that? Yeah, it looks beautiful. Oh, isn't it? It's so nice. So we're going to put it in our bowl here. Now, I know you were not supposed to do this, but I'm using a knife as a spatula. <laughs> okay, we have our taster. Now, remember, he usually eats a little bit of salt, so we'll see. He'll give us the honest response. He'll give us the honest response. He'll give us the honest response about how it tastes. You ready? Come in the camera. I don't have a spoon, so you're gonna have to just put your finger in it. There you go. And this is without salt. Now, if you if you are interested in still using a little bit of salt, the salt that I would recommend would be Kalanamak salt, and it is a salt from India. It does smell like eggs because it's high in sulfur content. Is it good even without the salt? Okay. Um, it's nice. I can't taste it. It smells so good. I want to taste it so bad. But yeah, so the Kalanamak salt is from India and it actually is a clay. So you, you see like the sea salt, they tend to be really hard, but the Kalanamak salt is, is it absorbs in water easier. And it actually is the only salt that um, a lot of the, the Hindus will use when they're going through a spiritual period. Um, they won't use any other salt other than the Kalanamak salt. Have you tried that Kalanamak salt? You know, I haven't. I've, I haven't eaten salt in quite a long time. I, where do you get that? You don't eat any salt. I really don't. Just just sea vegetables. And yeah, it's just just since, since it's about 2008, I heard Dr. Goldhammer speak, Dr. Esselstyn speak. And it, it wasn't that hard because my parents already had heart disease. So when I was born, so we didn't use it anyway. So I never really developed a taste mm -hmm. for it. Wow, you never got addicted to it. Good for you. Yeah, good okay. for, good for you. I did develop a taste for sugar and did get addicted to that. Hey, you know, I've been meaning to ask, how did you hook up with Chef Babette? Oh, so Chef Babette, um, I used to work work at Stuff I Eat. Um, and uh, then I left and moved to Belize for a short period of time before I met my husband. And when I and studied raw foods and I traveled with Dr. Aris Latham, I was his understudy for, for a couple of years, um, a little over a couple of years. And when I got back, I said, hey, you know, like, you know, you want a, you want a raw food menu? And she said, yes, I want, I, you know, we, we're ready for that. So I helped to create one of their first raw food menus um, or some of the stuff that is on the raw food menu. But I've known Chef Babette for like 10 years now, 10, 11 years. Yeah, she's amazing. You know, she's one of the hardest working women I have ever <laughs> encountered, <laughs> for real. And to be almost 70 and to have that kind of energy. And you know, that explains, side note, Chef AJ, that explains why your skin is so smooth, you know, because you are not preserving your insides with that salt. Right, it's a, per it's a it's a preservative. That's what people don't understand. Salt was never supposed. It's not a spice. Salt is not a spice. Salt preserves things. So we try to stay away from them because we don't want to be all preserved and all dried out. 
Okay, in fact, I have watched one of your videos um, with a doctor who was talking about Alzheimer's and sugar, I believe. Um, um, and a lot of people don't know that added salt will do that as well because any levels of dehydration in the brain, the brain uses 85% and utilizes 85% of water. So, you know, when we're talking about Alzheimer's, a lot of times the doctors have found that the, the brain is like dried out, it's dehydrated. Are you familiar with that, with the doctor who came out with the book? You're not, uh, let's say, you're not, um, you're not sick. You're thirsty. You're thirsty. Mm -hmm. Doctor, I can never pronounce his last name, but Dr. Batman is what I call him, right? So he, he, he specifically has cited that Alzheimer's, that dehydration helps to lend to the development of Alzheimer's, right? So that's something interesting. So this right here, what we're gonna do is you can form patties. And look how much you get, Chef AJ. This is about four cups that you got. So if, when we're talking about cost, you can make yourself like five patties in advance. You can eat this fresh. You don't even have to dehydrate it. We're gonna dehydrate ours but you don't even have to dehydrate it. You can eat it like this on salads. You could put it in a sushi and a nori roll. You could put it in a coconut wrap. You can eat it with, you know, top your, your avocado with this. It's an excellent, excellent, excellent recipe. Thank you for inspiring me, Chef AJ, to make it. Oh, great. So you see here, this is how the patty is formed and it sticks together. If you're able to see that. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna siphon these out and we're gonna put it in our dehydrator. And if you're dehydrating it, then you will wanna dehydrate it for four to six hours at 116 degrees or 17 degrees um, R. If you wanted to bake them, you could bake them as well. <laughs> so that's the great thing about this recipe. You can do it all kinds of ways, no matter where you're at and how you consume, as long as you're staying plant-based. All right. I'm gonna wash my hands and then we're gonna move over to the last recipe, which is gonna be finally my meal for the day. So are you familiar with, uh, let's see, cause there's somebody watching that says, they, uh, here, are you familiar with the Blue Hole Lighthouse Reef? The Blue Hole? Yeah, is, uh, Anne says she snorkeled at the Blue Hole Lighthouse Reef in Belize and it's beautiful. Oh, you are so blessed. <laughs> She's blessed to have that experience. The Blue Hole is a beautiful, you know, but it's a beautiful place. It's, um, I've never been because I am, I don't do well with snorkeling, but, but it's something that if I wanted to confront my fears, I would go diving there. It's one of Belize's number one diving spots, right? Um, Belize is so beautiful. You know what the beautiful thing about Belize is, is, is that you have islands and you have the mainland. So the islands are on the Caribbean side. So it's like if you wanted to go to Jamaica, hey, come to Belize, you could, you could go to the islands and then you could come and, and go to the jungle, right? So that's really, really cool. I think it has, no, it doesn't have rainforest. I don't think it has rainforest, but there's jungle. There's definitely jungle here. And then you have the mountains. It's very diverse in its topography and it's also diverse in the people and the cultures. And it's the only English speaking country in Central America. So it's like, you know, it, it's very easy to get around. The people are very lovely and, and, and um, pleasant and accommodating as well. All right. Chef India Apple, who's watching live, said Chef Babette just became a grandmother. I didn't know that. Yes, she became a great grandmother. Oh. Yes, a great grandmother. <laughs> yeah, she became a great grandmother. Congratulations to Chef Babette for that. You know, it's, um, I bet it's amazing to see, to see your generations come from you. You know, I don't have any children yet. You have grandchildren? You have children, Chef AJ? Nope, just this one right here. Okay, I can't see because I have the tape over the phone. So it's okay. I'll, I'll see it on the replay. It's just I a little, I'm just showing a little dog. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, well, we're going to make this gut juice. This is for the healthy gut, right? Um, 
you know, Chef AJ, when I first became a living foodist, it wasn't because I wanted to. <laughs> really, it was out of the fact that I was sick. I had a cyst the size of a, a grapefruit on my left ovary. That's what started me on this journey of eating plant-based. And when I went to, um, I went to, I woke up 1, 1, 1 a.m. Uh, I'll, back, I'll backtrack a little bit and say I was training for a half marathon. And I was running like nine, 10 miles at this point. And what happened was, is this one day I woke up and I had major pain in my side and I couldn't figure it out, went to the hospital. They said, listen, you have a cyst the size of a grapefruit and you're gonna have to be on an operating table next week. So from, from running 10 miles in one day to being on bed rest for two months was very traumatic. And I knew I never wanted to return there again. But when I went to the doctor, I asked the doctor, why is it that I have this? I'm healthy. I'm running. I'm training for a half marathon. You know what I mean? I eat salmon. They tell me to eat salmon. I'm eating salmon. I'm eating brown rice. I'm eating what they're telling me to eat in Muscle Magazine or Shape Magazine. Why am I, why do I have this? I don't understand. And he couldn't give me an explanation. So he said, listen, you're going to have to be on birth control. I was on birth control for many years. I was actually 176 pounds, <laughs> right? So right now I'm about 118 pounds. So if you can imagine another seven, 60, 70 pounds on me. And um, I said, you know what? I'm going to go see a naturopath. And she said, give up eating the animal products. You have to stop eating the animal products. Go on this raw food fast and cleanse. And, you know, and I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing that. And I did it. And I still was like, I don't know how people eat like this. You know what I mean? Like who eats just like raw coconut, raw cabbage salads at the, at that time, that's all I knew how to make. So, um, I had a little, little enough of that, but then I was like, I'm going to start eliminating certain things out of my consumption. So I stopped eating gluten. I stopped eating, you know, processed sugars. I stopped eating flour. I stopped eating a lot of dip corn. I stopped eating a lot of different foods and I felt better. So then I was like, a friend of mine made this raw pizza and I tasted it and it was amazing. And from the time I've known myself, I had suffered from constipation. So, I mean, there were, it would be times that I would have been like, you know, three days, I don't do a number two. And when I ate the raw food, the next day I woke up and I know this again, this may sound kind of gross to people, but literally the waste just dropped out of me. I didn't have to think about it. I didn't need to carry a magazine into the bathroom. I didn't have to like, you know, concentrate and do the hum da da hum da da hum da da, you know, to try to relax the system to have a bowel movement. So from there I was sold and I just started studying and studying and making living foods and trying different living foods from all over. And really for me, I can't say that living foods is, I would say from my personal perspective, living foods can be for everybody, but I will say, especially for those who have extremely compromised digestive systems, it is a, a healer and a repairer. Um, so for me, it, 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 was, it was highly beneficial. And if I try to eat, you know, cook foods, and I say I'm 90 to 100% all life. So there have been times that I have eaten, you know, lentils, or I, I go to Chef Babette's place and I have a taco, because <laughs> I just can't help myself, right? So, um, and sometimes I will have gut problems, like I will have, my stomach will be very sensitive to that. So I've learned that I just have to look at it and appreciate it and love it from there, right? So for the juice, for the juice, we have, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you more because I couldn't find the pineapple in Belize today. Tomorrow is market day. So a lot of the stuff is bare today. Um, but I'll give you the recipe that you will make at home, but I'm going to make it with what I have here. Right. So you're going to use four cups of pineapple two cups of papaya, one cup of apple, and ginger to your taste. Some people don't like too much ginger. Some people like more ginger than others. So it's pineapple, papaya, apple, pineapple, papaya, apple, and ginger. And all of them help to balance the GI system. Papaya 
it helps to bring down inflammation in the, in, in the digestive system. Most, I don't know if most people know, but papaya, the, the active enzyme of papaya is papain. And the number one ingredient in meat tenderizers is papain. Papaya breaks down everything. And it's actually one of those fruits that you can eat with vegetables and you can eat with avocado without having gut problems and not combining properly. So are apples. Apples help to remove um, acid from the, from the stomach, from the system, from the system, acid from the GI system, I would say. So, you know, like apples are, you can have apples in your salads, apples with your greens, papaya with your greens, and you will be perfectly fine with the digestion. In fact, it will help the digestion of it. Any questions before I start? Well, I, I'm just wondering food? if your husband is also a living foodist. Uh, yes, he's shaking his head. Yes, he probably eats more, cook, more, he probably eats cooked food more frequent than I do. Um, because he has an amazing digestive system. Because he was, he was brought up in Belize. So you know, like he grew up climbing fruit trees and eating a lot of fruits and taking a lot of bitters. So literally his system, he, we call it John Crow. What is it called? John Crow? John Crow stomach. You know, John Crow is the big birds that eat everything that is, you know, so in Belize, they call it John Crow stomach when you can pretty much eat almost anything and not be affected, fit, like symptom wise, but you still are affected by aging and putting a lot of stress on the system and stuff like that if you're eating out of order. So he eats what I prepare for him. You know, as long as I make the food, he's on it. He's all about the living foods. I make the I make some of, some of the best living foods, AJ. Some. Now, I'm sure there's some people out there that could top me, so I can't say I'm the best, but I would say my, my food is pretty good. It's pretty good. So I'm going to juice this now. You ready for me to juice? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> still combine well. I always tell people, make sure that even when you're juicing, you take into account food combination because just because it's juice, it doesn't mean that, you know, like as we know all year, you don't want to make sure melons with your oranges. So you just want to make sure to follow proper food combining. So yeah, yeah, you know, it was interesting because uh, when I met my husband, he wanted to do more living foods. But you know, I think for men, um, it's kind of, they always question if they're gonna be satisfied and if they're gonna be fulfilled. Can you pass me that cup? Um, if they're gonna be fulfilled, you know? And if they're gonna be satisfied. And then a lot of, a lot of men who are looking to be in a healthy food lifestyle, they tend to be very active. They tend to be active. So you wanna make sure, they wanna make sure that they are getting all the nutrients possible. And I think that many people view raw food or living foods as being rabbit food, <laughs> you know? And it really, you can make breads, you can make, I make breads, I have classes online where I make breads and flat breads and cookies and anything pretty much for the most part, for the most part that you eat cooked, you can actually eat live. Right? So we're going to give this a taste. Now this chef, AJ, I could taste. This I could drink right now. I'm going to taste her for this one. Let's give it a taste. Let's see. Mmm. And this is my food. I was so hungry. So this is my, this is my reward for not tasting the nut meat. 
Mmm. Mmm. You all are going to love that combination. All of these recipes really came out really good. How long does the nut milk last in the refrigerator or the seed milk? Three days. Three days. No more than three days. And you will know when it goes out. It will have a funky smell. <laughs> Yeah, but you can, you can make peanut milk, even though peanuts are not nuts, they're legumes, so make sure you, you soak them and you sprout them. But you can make peanut milk, you can make walnut milk, you can make, uh, obviously, sesame and Brazil nut milk, you can make um, pumpkin seed milk as well. So like anything, you can make all of those, all milks, you can make that with any kind of nuts and seeds. That's so cool. Yeah. So what's the best place for people to find you, follow you? Mm. So I'm on Instagram, it's Back to Live um, by Chef India. And I'm on Facebook as India Camille. I want to say India Camille, maybe India Allen, but I think it's India Camille. And Back to Live by Chef India is, is our business page. Um, we happen to be on TikTok too, even though I haven't really, you know, uh, been engaged with that platform as of yet, but also I our website back to live chef um, It's really a cool website. I offer um, free recipes. I'm also a journalist chef AJ. So I have news articles on there about nutrition and health and you know things that interest me. <laughs> On there, uh, I also have my blog that I speak about. Like we have articles up about minerals, we the importance of minerals. We have a blog up about you know being self aware. There's video recipes there. My courses are online as well, and I also have, which is really brand new. I'm dropping it today. Is our exclusive Chef India's um, recipe portal. And so it's a weekly membership. So you could choose to be a member for a week and it's $10, or you could choose to be a member for the month and it's, it's $25. And it has three se sec sections or segments. One, you get access to seven new recipes every week um, that, that are you know my signature recipes. And then you also get access to what I call my, my food think. And the food think is really articles and journal journalism journalist journalism articles that are that are all about food. It makes us think about food. So different reports and and such like that. And then you also get a video recipe, so you're able to you know tune in. And, and it's only ten dollars for the week, you know. So if and if you don't like it for one week, you can decide you don't want to do it again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can find me online. I do consultations online. I do nutritional consult consulting. So if people want to transition into, you know, living foods is my specialty. I can do vegan and I'm okay with that. And we have done that because we had a restaurant where we serve vegan food and I make great clean vegan food. Um, so if you're if you're if you are consuming animal products and want to transition into vegan, we got you covered. But if you want to also transition into living foods, we got you covered. We got downloadable meal plans there. Back to livechefindia.com. Well, thank you so much. And I'll make sure to link to everything in the show notes. Mm. I want to mention that I'll go ahead and send over the recipes to you, Chef AJ. The recipe cards are a link where people can access the recipe cards and they can download what we went over today. Well, that would be so nice. Thank you. I don't know if I'm allowed to ask a woman her age, but everyone's saying, you look so young. I'm 40. But you look amazing. Your husband, you. your husband is so tall, isn't he, I'm guessing? He's six seven, and I'm 5'2". <laughs> we is... get that all the time. Like, you know, it's like I'm the mini and he's the tall. You know, he's the big and I'm the small. You know, I'm going to have to introduce you to a couple of doctors in Santa Rosa because they're, they're raw food, uh, they do raw food mastery and they have a summit every year. I think you'd be a great guest for them. Oh yeah, that would be amazing. It's so much gratitude. So well, much gratitude. Friend, you're just lovely. So thank you so much for this wonderful presentation and send me everything and I'll put it in the show notes so people can find out more about you. 
I will, and thank you so much, Chef AJ. I really had a great time. I felt like I was doing a lot of talking and talking really fast. No, you were, you were I, great. I, no, this is, this is, I get, I get to sit and relax and enjoy. I love guests like you, so thank you so much. <laughs> And thank your husband for being, thank your husband for taking one for the team and being the taster. And thank all of you for watching another episode. Thank you too. Thank you come too. Say and I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll bump into each other again sometime. If he wants to come say goodbye, we, we can say goodbye. Yeah, if you want to well. come say goodbye. Come say, because you can't just be over there. You got to come say bye. Do you guys have Perfect. any, do you guys have any pets? We don't have any pets. No, no pets. No pets. no pets and no babies yet. So we need, to work, <laughs> we need to work it on out. But you know, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. That's all in divine order. All right. <laughs> well, well, that's great. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in two hours. Or we'll have another fabulous cooking demo with Kathy Hester. Thanks again, Chef India. You're wonderful. Thank you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.